Welcome to Module 3 of our Dental Implant course. This module explains the stages of dental implant treatment and it is divided into three chapters. During this module, participants are expected to know the implant stages and the importance of each stage, the overview of treatment planning and the consultation, the overview of surgery types and the procedure, the overview of impression types and the procedure, and the overview of implant restoration procedure. Dental implant treatment can be divided into four stages. The first is the treatment planning and consultation. The second is the implant surgery. The third is the implant restoration. And the fourth is the review and recall. The fourth stage will be discussed in the next module. Chapter 1. Treatment planning and consultation. Treatment planning and consultation requires several visits. During these visits, the history, chief complaint, clinical examination, radiographic examination and dental records will be obtained. Then treatment options will be discussed with the patient. During the initial consultation visits, the following should be completed. History taking, clinical examination, dental records registration and radiographic assessment. The implementation of a systematic assessment and diagnostic planning procedure would facilitate recommending proper treatment options and assist in reducing failure and complications. During the first visit, possible implant contraindications should be ruled out. This makes it important to obtain proper medical, dental, social history and chief complaint. This is then followed by a systematic clinical examination. A thorough medical history by means of a questionnaire or interview should be obtained and the following should be included. The past and current diseases, temporary or long-term medications, history of hospitalizations or allergies to medications or types of food. Then, a thorough dental history should also be obtained. The following should also be included. Carry status or any recurrent caries. Reasons for tooth loss such as caries, periodontal disease, or trauma. Oral hygiene habits, previous dental treatments such as periodontal treatment, root canal treatment, and past or existing processes. Recurrent caries indicates a high caries risk. This may indicate whether to maintain or replace a questionable abutment tooth. A person with a history of periodontal disease might be at higher risk to develop peri-implantitis and late implant failure. After that, a thorough social history should also be obtained. The following should be included. Education status, occupation, smoking status, and dietary features. It is essential to obtain a detailed chief complaint and history of that complaint in the first consultation. Expectations and concerns should also be obtained at the time. For example, replacing a missing tooth at the anterior region might be related to aesthetic and psychologic concerns, while in the posterior region it might be related to concerns regarding reduced function. It is also important to understand whether the patient prefers removable or fixed dental processes. After completing the history taking, clinical examination should be performed. The clinical examination comprises of several extra and intraoral parameters. Special attention should be paid to residual bone and soft tissue contours. The following extraoral parameters should be recorded. The first is the facial proportions. This is done by dividing the face into three thirds, from the hairline to the eyebrow, to the subnasal point, and to the chin. Ideally, the lower third or the lower facial height should be equal to the other thirds. Secondly is the facial symmetry. The third is the lip and cheek support, whether it is sufficient or insufficient. The fourth is the skeletal pattern, which could be normal, pronathic or retronathic. The fifth is the position of the central incisors and it is evaluated in rest and related to the upper lip length, as well as during smiling and relation to the height of the smile line. The sixth is the temporomandibular joint movement and function, in addition to the masticatory muscles. The following intraoral parameters should be recorded. The first is the existing dental condition. All teeth should be examined for presence of restorations and caries. 
the palpal condition and periodontal condition should also be assessed for all teeth. The oral hygiene status should be assessed as well. Secondly, the residual ridge should be assessed for resorption or defects, which could be vertical, horizontal or combined. Thirdly, is the mucosal quality and quantity, and the presence of pathologies. Number four, existing processes should be assessed in relation to their retention, stability, support and appearance. And finally, the complete occlusal assessment should also be recorded and any presence of parafunctional habits should be highlighted at this stage. After completing the clinical examination, the following dental records should be registered. The first is the maxillary and mandibular impressions. The second is the intraocclusal records at centric relation and maximum intercuspation positions. Thirdly is the facebook record. Then, a radiographic assessment is essential to evaluate bone quantity and adjacent anatomic structures, such as the roots of the adjacent teeth, the course of the inferior alveolar nerve, the floor of the nasal cavity, the diameter of the incisal canal, and the morphology of the maxillary sinus, including bony septi. Radiographic assessment can be categorized into two-dimensional and three-dimensional. 2D radiography is sufficient for simple cases and this includes periapical view and orthopantograms. 3D radiographic methods are indicated in specific situations, such as in the mandibular posterior region where the inferior alveolar nerve relation is important, and in the maxillary long span lensless region where the width of the bone anteriorly might be insufficient and where the relation to the sinus floor is important posteriorly. After finishing the initial consultation visit, the following should be done. Study casts should be fabricated from impressions and duplicated. Both sets of study casts should be mounted on a semi-adjustable articulator using Facebook and occlusal records. This will provide more information related to treatment that influences the final prosthodontic treatment plan. One set of study casts should be used for a mock wax up. This will help to determine the desired contour, occlusion scheme and aesthetic aspects of the final restoration. A surgical template should be constructed and this template could be used as a radiographic stent and to transfer the planned relation and angulation of the implants to the surgical site with more precision. After completing the initial consultation, the dental practitioner should decide whether dental implant is suitable for this patient in this current oral condition and if it is coincident with the proposed holistic treatment plan. After deciding the treatment options and plan, the final consultation and discussion with the patient can be conducted. After confirming the suitability of patient to receive the implant treatment, treatment risks and options should be discussed with the patient and the final treatment plan can be constructed. The following points should be discussed. The first is the implant treatment risks and complications. The surgical, early and late complications must be discussed with the patient and they must understand and be willing to undergo the surgery. Secondly is the implant system options. This will mainly depend on the practitioner. The third is the restorative options, which includes removable and fixed type and materials used for construction of the restoration. The fourth is any other treatments needed, including restorative, periodontal, and or endodontics. These are our references. Thank you for listening and see you in Chapter 2.